Hello everybody. So in this example, we need to design a controller in the frequency domain for a system which is provided for us as the transfer function as you can see here. 280 times s plus 0.5 divided by s times s plus 0.2 times s plus 5 times s plus 70. And the requirements, the design requirements are to have steady state error is smaller than 2% for the unit ramp input, to have crossover frequency omega c equal to 5 radian per second, and to have the phase margin be bigger than 55 degrees. So we will see in this example that uh, the best option as a compensator that we would find would be a lead lag compensator or a practical PID controller in, in some sense. Yeah? So we, we can uh, rewrite the transfer function of the system in this form. So we can have here 2 times 1 plus s over 0.5 over s times 1 plus s over 0.2 1 plus s over 5 and 1 plus s over 70. So this is another way of representing the transfer function and from here we see that we have we have 1 pole 1 0 at minus 0 0.5 and the poles at 0 right at the origin minus 0.2 minus 0.5 and 70 so to start our design procedure we can just uh, draw the body plot for the original system and then check to see what are the original situation let's say what what we have for the steady state or what do we have for the uh, crossover frequency and whatever we have for the phase margin. So to draw the body plot for the system in which g j omega is we use gp yeah? gp j omega is equal to 2 1 plus j omega this is j omega uh, divided by 0 0.5 over j omega 1 plus j omega uh, minus 2 point 2 1 plus j omega over 5 and 1 plus j omega over 70 here we will have the amplitude of gp and here we will have the phase of gp So we have several corner frequencies. The, we have one pole at the origin, then a pole at point 0.2, 0 at point, point 0.5, a pole at 5, and a pole at 70. So let's have frequency equal to 1 radian per second here. Then here we will have 10 and 100. 10, 100. 0 0.1 0 0.01 and same here the phase for this system will start at minus pi over 2 and at the end we will have minus 270 degrees here yeah? why? I, I believe you, you should know it now minus pi over 2 minus 3 pi over 2 and minus pi and this k 
can be considered as our let's say kind of asymptotes it's like greeting yeah regarding the amplitude we since we have one pole at the origin the uh, the amplitude will have minus 20 dB per decade slope starting with positive values then at uh, omega equal to 0.2 we will have another minus 20 dB so it will become minus 40 dB per decade afterwards at 0.5 we will have a plus 20 dB per decade slope added to the system so in total it will become minus 20 dB at pi at at 5 we will have another minus 20 and at 70 we will have another minus 20 and at the end we will have minus 60 dB per decade as the slope. By drawing the body plot for the system uh, for the amplitude and, the f and, uh, uh, and for the phase of course we can determine the cutoff or crossover frequency and the phase margin accordingly. Yeah? So if you draw it carefully, we have one pole at here, point 0.2, we have one zero at point 0.5, one pole at 5, and another pole at 70, so here is 70, 70, 5, 0.5 and here is 0.2 the, the original slope for the body plot was starting from 0 is minus 20 dB per decade the crossover frequency in this case would become 0.88 I already have calculated it so here we will have the crossover frequency omega c which is 0.883 at this point the slope will become minus 40 and then uh, reaching here it will become again Ah, okay, so maybe I need to show it in a better way. So let's. I, I just clean those. So when it becomes minus 40, we, we would need to have a steeper one. And then afterwards, it, it will become again minus 20 dB per decade, minus 40, and then minus 60. So this is kind of a symptotic body plot that we have for this system. Again, the cutoff frequency is 0.883. And regarding the phase plot, as I already mentioned, the phase plot will start at minus pi over 2, and then we will have minus 3 pi over 2, or minus 270 degrees. And the phase margin for this system will become 62.5. So we will have something like this. Uh, yeah, at the frequency equal to around. So this is 10 frequency, so we will cross the minus 180 at a given frequency. All right. So from these two graphs, we can calculate the phase margin at the crossover frequency. And if you wish, we can uh, calculate the gain margin as well. But for now, we don't need it. So we say that the crossover frequency is equal to 0.883 and the phase margin is equal to 62.5 
So for your reference, I just plotted the body plot for this system using MATLAB and inserted the figure here. You already know that know how to do it. Yeah, you can use body of in MATLAB, body of GP. And from there, you can di figure out what's the crossover frequency and the phase margin. What's the gain crossover frequency? So he, this is the frequency at which our gain becomes minus 180 is called phase crossover frequency. This is phase crossover frequency. And at that point, we can calculate the gain margin. And this frequency in which the gain the gain becomes zero dB is called gain crossover frequency. So from here we can see that the requirement on the the requirement on the crossover frequency is not satisfied. The requirement on the phase margin is satisfied because we need to have more than 55 degrees. But let's see what's the, how to satisfy the requirement on the steady state area. We need to have steady state area smaller than 2% or 0 0.02 for the unit ramp input. Since the type of the system is 1 and we have only one pole at the origin, we know that in order to determine the steady state error, we need to calculate the KV or constant velocity error constant. So let's do it here. For the original system, GPS, we can find KV, which can be obtained as limit of S times GPS as S goes towards zero. And if you do it, you will get KV equal to 2. And from this KV, we can get the steady state error, which is 1 over KV, 1 over 2, and it's 0.5 or 50%, which is not satisfactory. In order to satisfy the requirement on the steady state error, we can simply use the proportional control. Let's say our controller is uh, is determined as k. Then our kv kv will become equal to limit of k times gps as s goes towards zero, and it will become uh, two times k. And since we want to have the steady state error smaller than 0 0.02, 2%, yeah? let me just double check the requirement. Yeah, it is 2%. Accordingly, 1 over kV needs to be smaller than 2%. And from here, we can say that since kV is equal to 1 over 2k, 1 over 2k should be smaller than 2 over 100. So from here, we can say that k should be bigger than 25. Bigger, or bigger than or equal to if we have the requirement, yeah, it is, if it's smaller than or equal to 2%, then we can have this situation. And from here, we are going to use k equal to 25 as the proportional controller and see what happens with the other uh, requirements. Yeah? So with this selection of the, of the controller, we are going to satisfy the requirement on the steady state error but then we need to ch to double check the other requirements on the crossover frequency and on the uh, phase margin. So now we need to st 
this it will become G 25 times G PJ Omega we need to uh, draw the body plot for this system and you should know that the body plot for this system would be similar to the body plot of the GPJ Omega in the sense that the, uh, the phase graph will be exactly the same and the amplitude graph will be shifted upwards by the factor of 25 or you can find out the value in the decibel yeah? so going back to the figure that we already had we can say that in this case we will have the same phase plot for our system and the gain plot will be just shifted upwards Yeah, this is not a very really nice one, but still. So we will obtain something similar to this. For which we, we need to determine the crossover frequency, and accordingly we need to determine we need to determine the phase margin. So again, I have plotted it using MATLAB to save time, and I will show the result here for you. So here, as I already mentioned, the phase graph will be the same for the original system and for the case in which we are using the proportional controller with the value of 25. Regarding the amplitude, the lower one, which is the one in the blue color, maybe it's not that visible here, this corresponds to GPJ Omega, and the upper one corresponds to 25 GPJ Omega. So, for both of them, the phase crossover frequency is the same because we have the same phase plot. So, here is our oops, this is our phase crossover frequency. However, the gain press crossover frequency is now changed, yeah. So this was the original one, because here for the original the body plot we had the frequency in which the, the amplitude was equal to 0 dB and from there we had obtained the gain margin at 62 degrees as you can see here. Now the new frequency in which the amplitude uh, crosses 0 dB is here, so this is the crossover frequency, the new omega c, let's say, and the value for that is equal to 9.36, so this omega c is 9.36 radian per second, and the phase margin that we have over there is now 16.8, so here the phase margin is 16.8 degrees. Now, from here, we see that by the introduction of the proportional controller, we are satisfying the requirement uh, on the steady state error, but we need to improve the performance of the system in terms of the crossover frequency and in terms of the phase margin. We need to increase the phase margin by some factor because right now we have only 16 degrees and the desired value is bigger than 55 degrees. And for the crossover frequency, we have 9.36, and we need to make it equal to 5 radian per second. So to do so, we are going to use lead compensator and lag compensator. We will use lead compensator in order to improve the phase margin by injecting some positive phase at the frequency which is close to the crossover frequency. And then we will use the lag compensator in order to uh, decrease the crossover frequency by subtracting some, let's say, amplitude from the body plot of the overall system at high frequencies and keeping the 
low frequency amplitude uh, the same as before. Okay, so in the next step, I will show you how to design the lead compensator. You are already know you already know how the body plant of a lead compensator looks like. You, you can try to redo it for yourself. However, in the design process, since we want to have the crossover frequency equal to five, which is uh, somewhere here, let's see. Yeah, this is the point. Oops, I just moved the figure by mistake. So assuming that here we have omega equal to five. And we, we wish to have it as the crossover frequency for our system. So at this point, when we want to design the lead compensator, we assume that we have omega equal to 5 as the crossover frequency. And then we see how much phase do we need to inject to the system in order to satisfy the requirement on the phase margin. Then in the next step, using the lag compensator, we will actually make omega equal to 5 to be our crossover frequency by manipulating the amplitude graph around that frequency. So now we need to, to design our lead compensator. For which we will assume that omega max, the frequency at which we have the the biggest amount of phase is equal to 5 radian per second. And we need to determine the phi max. How to determine phi max? The maximum phase that we can inject to the system. To do so, we need to determine uh, what's the phase at that frequency for the compensator, for the proportional compensator, yeah? in the case that we are using the proportional compensator, in this case, we, we need to determine the phase of the system at this frequency. And then accordingly, we can determine the, the amount of the phase that we want to inject to the system to, to have the phase margin equal to, equal to or bigger than uh, 55 degrees. Eh? So, so by by measuring, uh, so at this point I noticed that I did a tiny mistake in the previous part. Instead of plotting the the body plot for 25 GP, I plotted it for 28 GP, and accordingly the phase margin that I have here is for 28, not for 25. So the correct, uh, let's say, phase margin for the original system with 25 GP J Omega is not 16.8 but it's it is 18.7 you can double check it yourself uh, okay so so now I was saying that we need to determine the phase at this Omega equal to 5 and then from there we, we would uh, know how much do we need to inject to the system. Yeah? How much phase do we need to inject to the system? By measuring the phase over there, we can... Uh, yeah, so the phase here... Let me show it here maybe with this color. So this will determine us the phase margin that we would have without lead compensator and by having the frequency crossover frequency equal to 5 if you uh, calculate it it will become 37.5 so the difference between the phase here and the minus 180 so this is 70 37.5 to clear it and write it again 37.5 and therefore the amount of the phase that we need to inject is the difference between 55 and this 37.5 plus some additional phase eh? 
which we usually take into account and it's uh, around 10 degrees. So we want to inject 55 degrees minus 37.5 plus additional 10 degrees. And this will give us phi max equal to 27.5 degrees. Now we have the omega max, we have the phi max for the lead compensator and therefore we can determine the value of alpha from 1 minus sine of phi max over 1 plus sine of phi max and by using the values that we already have obtained the alpha will become equal to 0.3 Six, eight. Now we need to determine the location for the zero of the system, zero of the compensator. So zero of the compensator will be determined as the value that we have for omega max, which is five times the square root of alpha, and from here. Zc will be obtained as 3.3 and obviously the pole of the system can be obtained as z divided by alpha and then pc will be equal to 8 uh, so it will be equal to 8.24 Therefore, the controller that we will have, including the proportional controller that, including the proportional part that we had, GC J omega will be obtained as 25 times 1 plus S divided by 3.03 .03 over 1 plus S divided by 8.24 so this is the controller that we have up to now now we can determine the body plot for the for this controller and for the process and then see what are the uh, let's say characteristics of the response yeah in terms of the phase margin and crossover frequency. We would see that we need to improve the crossover frequency and bring it to omega equal to five. I will do. I will plot the the body graph for GC GJ omega. So now our LJ omega is equal to 25 times one plus uh, J omega over 3.03. .03 divided by 1 plus j omega over 8.24 24 yes times gpj omega which was 2 times 1 plus j omega over 0.5 divided by j omega 1 plus j omega over 0.2 1 plus j omega over 5 1 plus j omega over 70 if you draw the body plot for this system you will obtain something similar to what I am going to have here so I just did draw it with MATLAB and here you see the new graph appearing. This is what we get for the new LG Omega as the amplitude, and this is what we get for the new LG Omega as the phase graph, the one on the top. Yeah. So in this case, the phase margin, with considering the crossover frequency of 15 is 22.5, which is not satisfactory, but we don't care about it. Actually, what we care right now is the phase that we have at omega equal to 5, yeah? This is this will be our crossover frequency. Because we are going to, to 
to modify the crossover frequency by introducing a lag, lag control. At that point, our phase is equal to minus 115 degrees, which means that the phase margin will be phase margin will be 180 minus 115, which is uh, 65 degrees. Eh? Vt minus yeah, 65 degrees, which is already more than enough. We have satisfied the phase margin. We have satisfied the steady state error. The only thing that is missing is to satisfy the cross lower frequency. And to do it, we are going to use a lag compensator. That's what we are going to do in the next step. So we need to design an additional lag compensator to make cross over frequency C omega C equal to five radian per second, which means that we want to have the amplitude of Lj omega at omega equal to 5 to be equal to 1 or 0 dB. And we don't want to manipulate the phase diagram that we have around this area. So we don't want to manipulate the phase diagram around this area because we, we don't want to change our phase margin. It's already all right. And we don't want to destroy it by the introduction of the, by injecting the phase from the lag compensator because we know that the phase of the lag compensator is negative. So if we have the effect of phase of the lag compensator somewhere around the crossover frequency, our phase margin may be smaller than what we have right now. So that's why we need to design the lag compensator in very low frequencies so that the phase of the lag compensator at higher frequencies, the frequencies around let's say crossover frequency is close to zero, which means that it will not affect the phase of the diagram for those frequencies. At the same time, it will change, it will affect the amplitude graph by moving it downwards. So at, at this frequency, let's say at the frequency omega equal to five, we need to push the amplitude downwards. How much do we need to do it? It depends on the value that we have right now, yeah? With the current controller, with the current proportional plus lead controller, we have some value here. So amplitude of Lj omega at omega equal to five can be determined. And after that determination, we need to compensate for that amount of amplitude using our lag compensator. So let's see what's the value that we have over there. The, the amplitude at that frequency is uh, 13.4 decibel. So here, we have the amplitude at omega equal to 5, 13.4 decibel. And therefore, if we want to push it downwards, we need to have the final amplitude for our lag compensator to be equal to minus 13.4 degrees. Yeah? So, and for the lag compensator, we know that if I redraw the amplitude for the lag compensator here, the amplitude of G lag, I would say. So we have this kind of behavior in which the amplitude here is minus 20 logarithm of beta, while we know that beta is bigger than 1. And for the lag compensator, we know that G, GC, let's say, J omega, can be written as 1 plus J omega over Z divided by 1 plus J omega times beta 
over Zc. And from here we, we can say that the pole Pc is equal to beta is equal to Zc divided by beta. That's correct. So we have the zero at Zc and the pole Pc is equal to yeah Zc divided by beta. So from here and since beta is bigger than one, we know that the pole will be closer to the origin than the zero. And to determine the location of the zero, the zero of the compensator of the lag compensator, we usually take it uh, one decade lower than the crossover frequency. Because if we do so, we don't, we will not affect the phase that the phase of the system with, with by introducing the lag compensator around the crossover frequency. So let's say that the z or the uh, zero of the compensator of the lag compensator will be located at omega c divided by 10. The desired crossover frequency, which is 5. Uh, something is wrong with the pen. 5 divided by 10, which will give us 0 0.5. So we know that cc is equal to 0 0.5. Now we need to determine the value for beta. As I as already mentioned, minus twenty logarithm of beta should be equal to minus thirteen point four decibels. And from here we can say that logarithm of beta should be equal to 13.4 divided by 20 and from here we can say that beta is equal to 10 to the power of 13.4 divided by 20 which will result in uh, the value of beta in this case will be okay let me just uh, calculate it using MATLAB beta will 4.67 now we can determine the value for for the pole we already know that pc is equal to yeah from here zc divided by beta zc is 0.5 so we have 0.5 divided by 4.67 and from here we can get the value for pc which is equal to which is equal to yeah 4.107 now we have all the values for our compensator, for our lag compensator. GC lag, I would write. Is equal to 1 plus S over 0.5 divided by 1 plus S over 0.5. One zero seven. Now the only thing that we need to check is to put the the compensators together, and afterwards check the response of the system for this uh, compensator. Let's say so. Putting everything together, we will get GCS is equal to the compensator. I will, I will just need to go back to check whatever we had before the introduction of the lag compensator. So we had, yeah, 25 times 1 plus s over 3.03 over 1 plus s divided by 8.24. So we need to copy this again over there. So it's 25, 25 times. 1 plus uh, for the lead compensator we have s over 3.03 .03 divided by 1 plus s over 8.24 
times 1 plus s divided by 0 0.5 divided by 1 plus s over 1.107 so this is the overall compensated that we have for this system as the last step we need to determine LJ Omega or LS which can be obtained as GCJ Omega times GP J Omega we, we just need to replace the terms that we have for GC and for GP and then we we can draw the body plot of the overall system and check to see whether all the requirements are satisfied now or not I will do it right now and show you the result that we have. Uh, and here is what we get as the body plot of the system it's uh, so the body plot for the overall LG Omega with the com with the lead leg proportional compensator and the original process is shown here with this dotted line I, d I don't draw it completely but you, you can see it from here in this case the phase margin which is obtained for the design is 60.4 degrees and the omega c crossover frequency is equal to 5.02 so if you want you can refine it in order to get omega c exactly equal to to 5 yeah 5 radian per seconds you should see that the phase of the system has become somehow uh, let's say the, the phase has increased at this point and you should guess that it's due to the due to using the the lag compensator yeah but uh, you can see that around the crossover you can see our phase is similar to the previous step so we still have the phase margin similar to what we had in the previous case for omega c equal to 5 now we need to determine what's the steady state error to see whether it's smaller than 2 percent or not you can do it by calculations at this point I just want to show you the step response of the closed loop system to them uh, not the step response sorry the, the response to the ramp input of the system yeah as we already had in the in one of the lab sessions and then over there we can see what's the difference and it should be smaller than uh, two percent or point zero two that's the last step that I will do for this and then we are done with the example so here is you can see the the response of the closed loop system to a unit ramp with the black color we have the reference signal unit ramp and the blue one is the response of the system of the closed loop system with the controller that we had designed so we have some uh, let's say transient response at the beginning however after a while for the steady state the difference between them is constant it's not easy to see it here so that's why in the next graph I will show you the difference between the step response of the not the step response the, the response to the unit ramp and the difference between the unit ramp and the response to the unit ramp in the next slide you will see it and over there it's obvious that the, in the steady state the the error is close to or it's exactly the equal to 0 0.02 so here you can see the error so this is r minus y in terms of time so it's rt minus yt and you can see that in the steady state we have the constant value for the error which is equal to 0, 0.0 to all the time okay so now we can see that the compensator that we have designed satisfies the steady state error it satisfies the requirement on the crossover frequency and it satisfies the requirement on the uh, on the phase margin 
We could have some requirements in terms of the attenuation of the noise or rejection of the disturbance and you should know now how to deal with them, yeah? So in this special example that we have, if we had the requirement on the uh, rejection of the disturbance, let's say gamma d, we needed to have gamma d equal to 0.1 for omega d is smaller than 0.1 by looking here, you, we can see that with the final design that we have at omega equal to 10 to minus 1, which is here, around here, we see that if here is our 20 dB, let's assume like, like that. So here is the dangerous area for the disturbance and we see that our design is already satisfying that but if the set if the requirement was something more than this then we needed to redesign yeah the the controller and on the other hand if we had let's say gamma n equal to point one again for omega n bigger than bigger than uh, let's say one hundred where frequency is bigger than 100, which is this frequency here. So then by determining where is the minus 20 dB value for the amplitude, we should say, we, we could say that this is a dangerous area for the noise. And then we can say that our design, the design that we have satisfies it. If you want, you can determine uh, what's the value of omega n for our design for a given value of omega d yeah? by referring to the amplitude uh, diagram you can say that our design uh, attenuates the noises with this factor for frequencies bigger than that and you can do the same thing for rejection of the disturbance you can say that for disturbances with the frequencies lower than this we have the rejection by this factor. Yeah? You can refer to the amplitude graph and uh, conclude this kind of discussions, let's say. So in general, this is how you can design a second order compensator, which is a lead lag compensator, or similarly, you can design a, a practical PID controller in the same way, let's say. So we started by designing the proportional controller, which satisfies our the requirement on the steady state error. Then we try to satisfy the requirement on the phase margin. And at this, at the last step, we try to satisfy the requirement on the crossover frequency. And again, remember that the, the crossover frequency and the phase margin determine the behavior of the system in the transient part of the step response or in the time domain. Yeah? So you know the connections between the properties of the step response and the properties of the body plot which are the crossover frequency in the phase margin. Uh, Alright, so this is all for this session of the class. I would like you to go through the lecture and do all the simulations using MATLAB and obtain similar graphs that I have here to make sure that you have understood all the sections. That's all for today. I'm waiting for your uh, feedbacks.